Hello, and welcome to yet another episode of Cooking with Corona. Although, as you'll know, if you've been following up to this point, we're not actually cooking with Corona. We are, in fact, cooking in the state of lockdown or semi-lockdown. That is, of course, unless you're suffering from COVID-19, in which case we are, in fact, cooking with Corona in both respects of the connotations within that sentence. Now, today's recipe is like the mincemeat one, going to be a relatively festive thing to make. It's pheasant, but I'm going to, I've got two pheasants, one in the freezer, and what I'm going to do is cook one now, or later, in the hope of having it for Sunday dinner tomorrow. And that way, uh, I hope that closer to Christmas, it'll be suitable for Christmas with more elaborate vegetables and so on. Now the first thing, we need to do is get these. I've got these pheasants, by the way, at a lovely butcher's not far from where I live. Uh, they ha they're, they're hung before you get them, of course, but I've just had mine propped up against the wall there just to make absolutely certain that all the juices run, well, not to the head because it hasn't got a head anymore, but uh, you know what I mean. It's just there in order that um, you know, the juices come into the right area. But the thing about uh, pheasants is they need a little bit of help. They're not f sort of corn-fed, fattened birds in the way that chickens are. As such, they need a lot to bring out the flavour. And that's why you often see them uh, with streaky bacon wrapped around them. Now, I may do that. I've not made up my mind just yet. I'm, I'm, I've got a sort of hybridised recipe in my mind here. Making a pheasant glazed is unusual, but uh, I think we just might do it. So, before we do anything, we need to just get some water. I'm going to fill this baking tray with water. I'm hoping that following as I am a recipe that calls for... Um, four cups of water, I'm doing it with the right cup. I, I presume they're um, US cups, not imperial cups. It's over 900 millilitres, I think. So I've got some of this water in a mixing bowl, a not very clean mixing bowl, but a mixing bowl nonetheless. Just get those little bits out and some salt. Now a quarter of a cup, or around 60 millilitres of salt. Just measuring it out here. Into the water then I'll place this salt. So, salt is in the water. Hopefully it's dissolved. Take the bird place it into the salty water and there I shall leave it to soak overnight. I will see you a bit later. Now a quarter of a cup or around 60 millilitres of salt. Just measuring it out here. Now, change of garb, I know. This has had an overnight stay then in the salty water. So I'm just leaving it here to stand on the chopping board. And we now have to season the cavity a little bit. Not with salt necessarily, because it's just been in salt for a long time. No, what's needed is a good bit of pepper. As you know, I've always got this uh, pepper here that's mixed with turmeric to give it an extra kick. Never what the ingredients specify, but I think it'll add a little um, something to it. Get a nice bit of sage and put that in the cavity also. It's just a pinch or, well, just over a teaspoon, just, just over a half a teaspoon in each cavity. So a whole teaspoon in total, I guess. Maybe for fun I'll add some mint. 
Now I actually am following a hybridized version of two recipes, so I need to uh, add some stuffing, which the actual glaze recipe I am looking at did not. But I think for my purposes it'll still work. It's a sausage meat and chestnut stuffing that I'm making. You may remember uh, in a previous dish I wanted to make, uh, uh, when I was making pork I think it was, I wanted to stuff with um, chestnuts and I couldn't find them, they weren't in season. Now at last I can. So, chestnuts, let's chop. Oh, that took a long time. To chop all these chestnuts. Now, the sausages next. I think I'm going to just use two. I could have just bought sausage meat, but I'm going to get these two sausages that I have here from the butcher, two pork sausages. You can use any sausage that you like. Um, the next time I make this, I might use that kind of spicy curried sausage um, that, I might, that I might use when I attempt this the second time. But you can use beef if you prefer it, or venison if you can, yeah, because they're, or, or something of that nature. If you can find pheasant sausage, use that, so you can have a double whammy. But I'm going to take these and I'm going to mash them and I'm going to put them in as stuffing. And also over here I've got some raisin soaking, that's my personal addition to this. Hopefully it'll all work. It's a very small bird but you'll be surprised how much you can squeeze in there. Alright, here's the sausage meat and chestnuts in together. I'm going to put in some more well, all of the chestnuts, really. I might extract Here's a little more of the sausage meat. Some nice chopped thyme in there as well. About a teaspoonful or two. Give it a nice mix. A little more thyme, I think. Tiniest pinch of dried mint. And another of my personal ingredients, and that is the pepper and the turmeric mix. I know I've put some already in the bird, but, well, I think it would be nice. So, I'll just mix that around. And now another personal touch, and that, of course, are the raisins that I mentioned earlier. Some nice plump raisins that I've been keeping in the water. And they're already quite large, much larger than the ones I had in, I managed to get in the Christmas mince meat, where only the uh, sultanas appeared to grow. Let's put that in then. And give it a mix. I know it's already going to be quite sweet because of the glaze, but it'll be a nice fruity um, touch to the uh, general stuffing, I think. And also, we associate dried fruits with Christmas a lot in this country. Half an ounce or 10 grams worth of butter. Mix that. Now set aside both bird and stuffing. And, uh, well, you can put it on a rack, but I would rather like to rest it on some onions. I think they'll be nice as gravy. What I'm doing here is putting some onions and carrots, maybe some celery, I've not made that up my mind yet, as a sort of cushion. On this I'm going to place the bird. I'm hoping that they'll cook. The, the carrots are grated, of course. The onions have been chopped in the usual way with my not cutting the stalk so that uh, I didn't cry whilst doing it because that stops you from crying if you're susceptible to crying because of onions. Uh, trouble is I've cut my finger so it really hurt but it still works for my purposes. The uh, onion by the way is preheated at 230 degrees Celsius or 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to stuff the bird now that I've got its little bed, hopefully. Mix once more this lovely sausage meat and chestnut stuffing I've been making. You'll get in more than you expect to because it's quite wide in here. I better put it in the oven. Now take this uh, 
pheasant here. I've stuffed both ends. I know you're not supposed to. Ah, isn't that lovely? There's more room in it than you think. Then plug everything up. Now the bird is already bound at this end. I'm going to get some string and try to bind it shut at the other. But before doing so, we need some rashers of bacon. Rind off first. Let's get the string and you can see here how I've uh, taken three rashers and bound them together. I've got a third one here to place it on. I sort of tried to plug it up at that end. It seals that end close as well, although I think it'll work. This end I'm going to take the string. You can see the uh, these are already bound up. Into the oven it goes then. And we'll leave it for about 15 minutes. Now it's been cooking for about 15 minutes. Come and see. Now, there are all kinds of things you can glaze it in. I've seen recipes where they just sprinkle sugar over it to caramelise it. One recipe I looked at, one that I'm kind of semi-halfway following, is um, used uh, starfruit syrup. Sounds very exotic. I think the most exotic I'm going to get is using Greek honey. And I've also here got some uh, fig jam. I thought since it's around Christmas time it will be do quite well. So I've got the bird out and I'm just going to cover this in a strange mixture of fig and honey. Right, I chose the Greek honey because I thought it would be runnier and easy to get out, but no such luck. I can't even get the spoon in. So I'll just use some ordinary, well, Greek honey is ordinary honey, but some British, made from our British bees, you know nice and luxurious. Nice bit of fig jam there then, just to add to it. Oh, see how it slips off the spoon, even easier than the honey. Another slice of bacon, I think. As you see, I've bound some extra bacon on there and tied it up some more. Having given the added extra sweetness to it, I'm going to put it in the oven for a further 40 minutes, but I'll probably interrupt it halfway through in order to baste it again. Very well, 20 minutes has passed. Let's glaze the other side now. Just use the exact same method. Ah, oh, it's slightly runnier here, so honey first, fig jam next. Then in the bird should go for a further 20 minutes. While it's in the oven, I'm, I'm, you can see I've got some frozen beef stock here. It's not an exact replica of the recipe I'm following, but it'll do. So, a few of the greens left behind from the, from the beef stock that I made, I'm going to put in almost wishing I'd uh, got myself some uh, a whole bird with giblets that would be even better if you've got them use the giblets but this is pheasant so look at that lovely bird and I'm going to pour the juices of it into that stock and vegetable mixture that I made Pour the juices in then. See how lovely and brown that looks, and how much it's browning more. Tablespoonful of flour into the same mixture to thicken it. 
here's some lovely sherry. Never tried this as a gravy before, but we'll see. Let's taste it a little by itself. It's all right, it'll do. Looks thin, I know. Now I'm going to very gingerly pour some into a jug that I've got right here. Very well. Let's put the pheasant onto this plate here. Cut away the string. And carve. I'll add some other veggies, some nice mashed potato. They'd have been roasted if this really was Christmas by the way and I'd have probably nestled them in amongst there to make the roasting easier. I believe I've done something like that before in a previous recipe. Now the sherry gravy. It's a very much distorted version of the recipe I was following. The website of the recipe it was based on shall be linked, of course. Same as the two that the pheasant dish was vaguely based upon. Now, we taste. <sighs> very nice. At least I hope it's very nice. Hmm. The bird is not too dry, which is nice. It's a very lean bird, which is why it requires the juices. Let's try the gravy first. Nice. Definitely taste the sherry. Mmm. The caramelised onions. Some of the outer skin of the pheasant. Hmm. Curious. It's a strange mixture of flavours once you glaze it. But strange in a good way. Yes. Whoa, that's lovely. Let's try a little of that uh, gravy. Hmm. Let's try specifically some of the gravy. Oh, definitely taste, definitely taste the sherry in there. Got a good nice kick in there. The stuffing. Sausage meat and chestnut stuffing. Oh, this is beautiful. Very beautiful bird. Oh. Beautiful bacon as well. Mom. This then, oh, I'm have another slice before I pick you up. Mm, lovely. So that's glazed pheasant. Still not terribly good at presenting things, I know that, but still. I think such a bird would be good for Christmas. I might, as I said, add different kind of glazing. More honey as well, it's honey that I could make sure did run. And the lovely fig I might get more of if I can find it. But overall a very nice bird. So, try it yourself if you like. And if you don't like, ta-ta!
it's over 900 milliliters, I think. I think I'll use a cake tin for it because it's uh, the right kind of size and won't spill over. So, no, that's still not right. Maybe a cake tin is best. I hope so, anyway. No, mixing bowl it'll have to be. Maybe that was too much salt. It looks like it could have been, but I'll stir it and it'll work, I'm sure. This has had an overnight stay then in the salty water. And some of the water just ran down my sleeve when I just held it up there. In the uh, should go for a further 20 minutes. Just get that fork out. 